Hi everybody, it's Alex Newton from Kalytics, today with the Kindle market trends for April May 2020. So let's have a look. We've spent the last couple of weeks crunching endless columns of numbers for you, trying to find emerging patterns and trends in the book data. And as we emerge from the trenches with the results, we asked ourselves what illustration could epitomize the whole market situation in one single image. And this is what we came up with. Beautiful roller coaster where the Amazon Kindle wagon shoots up the hill saying catch me if you can, which is my European and very diplomatic way of saying F you coronavirus. And all of this is happening as you can see very much on the back of the print books. And in this first video where I'd like to present the results of all the analysis we conducted to you, we're gonna talk about the COVID-19 book market impact in terms of market news, growth areas, what happened to reader interest. We're gonna look at category winners and a very daring first market projection for 2020 after all what happened over the last couple of weeks. If you follow the discussions in the leading author Facebook groups, you often find posts where people ask, what happened to your book sales? Of course, some authors answer, my sales are great despite COVID-19, while others say, don't ask mine to dive. Don't get me wrong, these discussions can be helpful, but it's often very hard to come to conclusions based on them. So let's not fly blind during these times. Let's use all the data we can possibly get to find out what's happening. And to be honest, when the lockdown fog clears, the sight often isn't very pretty. And the same is the case when we take a look at some of the market data. However, and that is the good news, we also found a lot of good news for Kindle authors, and I want to share this with you today. Of course, first everyone had to absorb and digest the shock and the uncertainty. Just take a look here at retail consumption in the US. This graph shows the weekly change of purchases of general merchandise versus a year ago. And while in February things were still fine, you see here by the mid of March, things really took a dive. The good news and the bad news is that here with the beginning of April, the decline versus the prior year started to improve again. But still, while we wait for the numbers of the last week, we already know this will be a pretty dire picture. Let's examine how this decline in consumption hit the book markets. And of course, by now, everybody knows that the print book retail sales were hit very hard. I was actually surprised to see that with half of March, the retail stores haven't been closed. The decline in print book retail sales was only minus 7% versus 2019. And looking at the previous picture once more, we, the retail consumption here in April versus March, it can be expected that when the full numbers are out for the month of April, there could be another even worse hit. Although BookScan reported that in, I think it was one or two weeks of April, due to the Easter sales, that picture was a bit alleviated. That being said about print books, well, there is one big beneficiary, the eBooks. Here's the search interest for eBooks over the last 12 months. And between the week of March the 8th and March 22nd, the search interest for eBooks on Google doubled. It grew by 100%. This massive spike in eBook interest during the lockdown has translated into a significant rise in eBook and online sales. Here are just some random data points that have been reported in various blog posts. UK reading agency reports 31% of Brits are reading more since the lockdown. Now Rakuten Intelligence, the market research arm of the major worldwide retailer reported online book sales up 777% in the first half of April versus March and 295% year on year. The great guys from the ebook distributor draft to digital reported that all their retailers are up by an average of 25% and their library channel, by the way, over 130% after 
sales a sales slowdown during the first of the weeks of the stay home order time, which makes total sense if you look at this picture once more. And BookBub just reported in a great blog post that the estimated ebook sales they saw resulting from the featured deals have increased by double digits over the last few weeks. To drive the story home, here we are very much focused on the Amazon platform and we saw this unprecedented KDP growth. Specifically, the Kindle Select Global Fund that represents the royalties paid to authors and publishers that signed up to Kindle Unlimited and have gone exclusive with Amazon. Many a blog post or Facebook group has reported on the $29 million that have been paid out in March, but few really saw the significance of it. First of all, this 29 million is the highest ever monthly payout ever since the inception of this fund and Kindle Unlimited. And secondly, it's been the best March growth in years. What do I mean by that? You see a whole number of bars here and each bar shows the monthly growth rates of that Kindle Select Global Fund versus each prior month. And with the green color, we highlighted each growth rate in a March, month of March, and the red one denotes the monthly growth rates of February's versus the month of January. And what you see here in March 2020, look at the two numbers. The Kindle Select, the 29 million in March 2020, the 6.6%. Well, also a year ago in March, there was growth. It was 2.1%, 5.0% .1 in 2018. March grew 5.4% percent versus February in the year 2017 and here in 2016 it was 6.4 percent well before that you know when it was just introduced there were even higher numbers but this is here when things sort of the growth stabilized so you see March has been the best growth in years and if you also look at February just a month before well in February we've always seen a decline of the Kindle Select Global Fund but apart from the outlier in 2018 February 2020 represents the lowest decline we've ever seen in a February month and last not least that 29 million in the month of March represents the highest year-on-year -year growth that we've ever seen and the highest March versus February growth since 2015. Wow, that is massive growth and the question is where has that growth gone? Well, ebooks of course, but let's get more specific here. What has been selling here during the pandemic? Unsurprisingly, immediate survival interest sells. Here we have the average sales rank of the top 20 Kindle bestsellers in the category medical ebooks, internal medicine, infectious disease, an improvement in two months of 82%. Likewise, the books representing the category diseases and physical ailments, respiratory grew by 85% in sales rank. And for those of you who know Kalytics and our tool, the Kalytics strategy map that plots every category in terms of the size of the category versus the sales of the category, you see that uh, even these non-fiction categories such as uh, physical ailments, respiratory ailments, moved up into what we call the area of hot cells, representing categories that are, you know, less than 2000 titles in size and the sales rank, okay, 15,000, that's not the Kindle store top 100, but usually these categories basically sell nothing at all. Then we all know it was so hard for all these countries, institutions and healthcare workers, hospitals getting face masks. Well, here is the ebook category reference books about instruments and supplies. And I also counted this under immediate survival interest, being a dad myself. Here is the 50% increase in education and reference, teacher resources, homeschooling. And it also doesn't come as a surprise that books about travel, Europe here as an example, Italy, Florence, took quite a bit of a dive. So after immediate survival interest, we also saw readers fighting the lockdown blues. So here's the category crafts, hobbies and home gardening and horticulture, vegetables as an example. 
And this is an interesting one because, to be honest, there is always during springtime an uptick in the sales, as we can see from the Kalix Elite data here. But it's been stronger than in previous in the previous year in uh, this year. If people are not gardening, they may also seek spiritual advancement or consolation. And here we see the sales category for Christian books and Bibles, ministry and evangelism, sermons. And yet other people try to use the time productively as well by reading books here in business life, motivation and self-improvement. So clearly there is a connection between book sales and what logically should happen during these times. And it should also be noted that we saw ambulance chasers fail. And I think that's also what should happen. What do I mean by that? Well, do readers search for coronavirus on Amazon? Of course. And they even did so on the Kindle store, as you can see here. And the next question is, do some authors try to chase ambulances by publishing books about the coronavirus or COVID-19 or anything related to it? Yes, of course. Well, have a look here. We tracked the number of titles that were published during the month of March and month of April, which is just about to end here, month of April, with a publication date during these months and with the reacting to the keywords, the search terms coronavirus or COVID-19. Guess what? More than 2,100 books have been published in the last two months, the majority of them via Kindle Unlimited. I think the, the, at least the good news in this is it, it just illustrates how fast and agile the indie publishing community usually is. However, is it worth it? Is it worth chasing ambulances? Hell no. Just look at these. these are, this is today here, end of April. The, I think, top eight search results when typing in coronavirus. And these are the books. For some of them, you can already tell that they've been rushed into the market. And just look at their typical sales rank here that we've monitored. I mean, 323,000 on the Kindle store. I mean, that's nothing. They don't sell anything. And I'm not surprised at all. So before we go into other categories and specifically fiction, let's take a first 2020 careful projection of what might happen. To do so, let's just recap this picture here, the search interest for eBooks on Google over the last 12 months with this spike here mid-March. And here we have the search interest for coronavirus, which is an interesting analysis in its own right because it shows you, yes, we did have a peak here in global interest for coronavirus in exactly the mid mid week of 15th of March. And ever since then, you see interest has been fading again. Let's overlay the interest for eBooks with a coronavirus graph, you can see that the spike in ebooks has immediately followed the spike in coronavirus interest. But you see, while interest for coronavirus is in steep decline already, you see that, yes, there is a decline for ebooks, but even here an uptick again. And here's the big question what will happen to the blue line? Will it be scenario A that the change is sticky, that, you know, people stick with the buying ebooks. Will it be scenario B where we see the inertia in the book market, where this will simply go back to normal, but over a longer period of time? Or will it be similarly as fleeting an interest as we've seen for the search term coronavirus? Having looked at ebook market data for the last six years here at Kalytics, in many genres, we very often see the inertia in the book market. You know, there's a big blockbuster movie, uh, certain type of books, you know, take a rise and it takes quite a while for them to fall back down again. My bet is probably here more the inertia type of type of scenario. Also with some lockdown still going on and people still being pretty cautious. Now, whichever the case may be, if we go back to the picture that we had about the Kindle Select Global Fund, well, we have all the actual numbers from 2014 to 2019, and we have the full numbers for the first quarter 2020. And if we just take the seasonality of what usually happened, how much the sales of the first quarter represent of the whole year, and if we did just that very simple projection based on Q1, 
we would, despite the decline here in February, we would still see an overall growth of the Kindle Select Global Fund in 2020 with here 2% growth. This is now obviously very crude and we're all anxious to see what the April number is going to be as the next indicator. And with the paper page rate, the Kindle edition normalized page count rate uh, in US dollars being pretty stable at around $4.65 per 1,000 pages read, we can compute the estimated number here of page reads with, for the year 2020, you, we can already, based on the first quarter, see a total volume of 68 billion pages read by the end of the year. Now, I know this is very preliminary and perhaps a bit daring to do so amidst these uncertain times just based on the first quarter numbers. But I see based on what we've seen in the first quarter and all the market indicators, we see the shift to eBooks and Amazon grabbing a big share of it. I think this is very good news for many authors out there. And with that, I hope you now understand why we came up with this picture of the catch me if you can. I hope you enjoyed this thus far. Of course, there's way more to look at and we will do so in video part two, more about COVID-19 market impact. And we have analysis coming up about former share gains, about the, the one big winner genre, so the all the fiction genre impacts that we've been observing we look at pricing and more so please join me in video part two as soon as it is available of course if you want all the details quick note to the Calytics elite members you find the latest data with the april 2020 data in the members area with all the growth rates from the last month for more than 7,000 categories and you can sort by them. If you're not a member yet, check out kalytics.com. I look forward to seeing you in the video part two of this analysis. This is Alex Newton from Kalytics, ebook market intelligence for success.